What is going on my fellow rockers? We are here on the P99 Green server and we are looking to get one of the coolest looking, world renowned sets of armor that a bar could get in the game. Lamb Band baby, the cool blue. Uh, before we get into it, please find the links to the different pieces down below in the description. I have a breakdown for each zone, how I kill each mob, obtaining the pieces, the gems needed, and the final turn-ins. So please skip ahead. So I am here on McTwisty and this guide is for the solo bard. Obviously these quests can be done easily at a higher level, or with a group, or a duo partner, or you could buy the pieces outright. However you want to do it, that is a-okay. Uh, but we are bards and we kick ass, so I decided to do this at level 40 because this level works out very nicely for killing mobs uh, that are required to get these pieces uh, for the quests, and any name that pop up, that pop up along the way. Uh, for some of those, you might need to use some SEO tactic, but overall, not a big deal. Um, also, being level 40 is well-rounded with songs, and you get your single target dispel at this level, which I like to use quite often on a lot of these mobs that we'll encounter, uh, to remove their damage shield, right? We don't want to take extra damage at all. Um, so my song lineups were pretty consistent throughout for the most part. Uh, used some dot kiting in places like Kazakh Thule um, and in North Karena. Uh, we're fighting hill giants and griffins and whatnot to take down mobs. Um, and we do this to maximize our kill speed. Um, I also did this to avoid having to sit around and heal up, which just kills our time. But I also did some reverse kiting or fear kiting uh, in the oasis and some other areas uh, to take on the treacherous aqua goblins. And I even did some charming. I'll explain all of these in a moment coming up. Um, I did think the hardest place this time around, uh, kind of a mix at Kazakh Thule because of the random healers and the damage output of the zealots and the fanatics, and in Saiyasex I fighting the mages due to their casting and blasting. Uh, but the real heavy hitters were, in fact, the Aqua Goblins, but I found a way to make the hardest mobs the easiest. And the longest camp this time around was the Griffins in North Karena, which took me over four hours to, to acquire that piece. So, uh, with that, you know, may the RNG gods be in your favor throughout your questing. I hope you enjoyed the fashion show. Let's get to it. Alright, welcome to the Temple of Sayusek Ro. This is where our lamb bent journey will begin initially. Obviously we can just go and start getting all collecting all the pieces and then turn them in at the very end. No problem, you do not need to come here first at all. But uh, it is uh, cool to see this place and to check it out and to know who and what we're going uh, to talk to or who, yeah, who we're going to talk to to get our pieces. So real quick, uh, initially what we're going to do is entering uh, the temple here, a quick map. Right, we're right here right now, and we were just going to go in, either left or right, doesn't matter, but we'll go left, let's say, and into the middle here, and we're going to look for two NPCs here that start the quest ultimately, and that is Carissa Star Dreamer and Walthan Fireweaver. So real quick, let's run there. So we're just opening the main gates here, going left. through the doors and then we'll enter the main room and look to our right uh, and here are Walton Fireweaver and Carissa Star Dreamer so which ones do what well you can easily hail them and they will tell you what they do um, as you get in there you'll see Lambent Armor and it'll bring up the list so real quick let's bring up the actual wiki page this is a very helpful tool here um, so on, on the P99 wiki page just type in Lambent Armor and it will bring this up and uh, tell you exactly where you need to go and what you need to do uh, for each piece. You can see all the rewards and scroll through and see what you, what you really want. And uh, of course we want all of it. But uh, And it will come down and it will show you that Carissa Star Dreamer does. Uh, she's in charge and responsible for giving you the quest for the Breastplate, Helm, Van Braces, and Bracers. And Walth and Fireweaver does the Greaves, Boots, and Gauntlets. So just be mindful of that, and you can use this guide to tell you exactly what you need, where to go, um, and what drops the items. So very, very useful tool. You can also click these boxes here uh, to check off what you got, just as a simple reminder if you have it up. But otherwise, not a big deal. Uh, we'll get into how to get some of the lamb bent stones, and we'll get and we'll show you real quickly the NPCs who we're going to turn these into, just as a reference. So we're going to do all these in each section of the video, but just as as a reference, we're going to look uh, for Alyssa, and uh, she is up top here. Uh, she's up top over here, and Garden, uh, Gardern. On uh, how we get there is we will since they are on the 
um, technically the right side, but they're on this side, so we'll go through this door in the middle. And instead of going straight, we will go to the left here and up the up the ladder, up the, up the steps, and then to the right, and there is Velissa and uh, Garden. So when you come and do these quests, be sure to ensure that you need a lamb stone and two rubies, and you will hand those three into uh, Velissa. Um, and she will give you the lamb bent ruby. Uh, same with uh, Garden with the sapphires here uh, to get a, a lamb bent sapphire. So that's cool. Uh, the other two um, will be Jenny and um, Ostorm. And they are located a little bit further inside. So from here, we would just kind of backtrack the way we came. Or actually, it would be here in the middle. We came out of the doors here. Uh, we came up these steps. But if you, go, if you pretended to come up, and then to the left, you'll go through this set of doors, and you'll go up, and you'll stay on this side, you'll turn left, straight down the hall, and through these doors, and you have Jenny and Ostorm. So real quick, um, when we get into those, this is a little bit, uh, um, we need to really pay attention with this, because we need to give a Lamb and Stone and two Fire Opals to Ostorm. Um, the way to get a fire opal is you have to give 550 gold pieces, so this is gold, not platinum, uh, to Jenny, right? She gives you these fire opals, and then you will take that, you'll take one or however many you need. Um, you need a lamb and stone and two fire opals, and you will give them then to Ostrom, Ostorm over here. So this is kind of a a thing that you can that you could mess up so there are two you will need four of these total um, and that equates to 200 2200 gold pieces uh, so when you when you get that um, just be sure to not go anywhere else but to get uh, those those because if you buy something it will eat your gold first and then if you you know if you went to a merchant along the way or did something uh, silly like that then you have to go back to the bank and reconvert it back to gold pieces from your platinum also, just looking at the gems real quick, um, if you were to buy all of them outright, again, I, I just show uh, you can go to like West Commons or Freeport to buy gems, but you can go to any city. I just look that up in the wiki page. If you click on like rubies or something, it'll show you all the merchants down below uh, where you could buy those and the same with the sapphires and, and star rubies. Um, but nonetheless, if you do buy all of them outright, um, for me, um, it costs for two rubies, uh, 269 platinum, total uh, for four star rubies it cost me 533 platinum uh, for four star rubies for four stat fires it cost me 820 platinum pieces uh, so that's a total of 1622 platinum and that is rounded up so that you have exactly enough to get them all if you all if you're only carrying platinum uh, so uh, and again for four fire opals at 550 each that would just be 2200 gold pieces uh, not platinum pieces. All right, so Amy Moonspin here can sell the rubies uh, in North Freeport. So on a map, real quick, if you just come in, we're inside the bank, right over here. So if you know where to get, how to get to the bank from either you know whatever zone in you want to uh, get to, so we're right over here to the bank, and she is right inside. And so just looking around real quick, you can see where we are. Um, but you come up to her, and it's about 263 per ruby or 268. Let's see. Ruby, 268, 7 gold, 7 silver, 6 copper. So we'll buy at least two of those and be on our way. All right, to get our sapphires and uh, star rubies, a, good, a, a nice easy spot that I, I always thought was uh, pretty simple was uh, here in West Common Lands. Uh, so here's a map real quick. Here are the druid rings. Right here, the wizard uh, spires. Or teleport pad um, and over here at number 11 uh, next to Befallen uh, we can buy those gems uh, so here's Befallen over here you come in and you talk to Norisa Sparkle and she will sell both the sapphires which you will need four of so at 204 a piece if we buy four uh, 819 platinum one gold and then uh, four star rubies out, 133 plat, one gold a piece. 
Uh, so we'll buy four of those. Uh, so that was 532 platinum, four gold, four, four star rubies. So, so cool. We got those gems as well, and we'll get back to uh, Saiyasek's temple. With that, uh, we'll get into it. I will go through each of these right down the list as it is. That's how I'm going to set up uh, all the quests here in the video. So, uh, with that, let's get into gear real quick. Okay, so basic gear, um, I'll go through all the pieces. We have two alligator tooth earrings, um, five hit points. We have a crested helm, um, serpent skin eye patch, dwarven ringmail tunic, small bronze van braces, troll hide belt, fire emerald golden bracelet, drake hide leggings, elf hide gloves, Dwarven Work Boots, Hero Bracers, Bloodstained Mantle, Hooded Black Cloak, Bear Two neck, uh, Necklace, a Reed Ring, a Jagged Band, Runebone Fork, some Throwing Daggers, but I, I never use them anymore. They're just kind of sitting there. Uh, we do have Mistmore Battle Drums. We have the Loot of the Gypsy Princess. Our Dragoon Dirk and Enamel Black Mace and the basic uh, whistle uh, will be our gear. I show that just so that just so that um, this is exactly what I'm going to use for all the kills all the way through. At one point when I was killing and saw you uh, the saw you sec champions, they dropped the Fury Van braces and these have five fire, so I definitely put those on over my bronze armor uh, to fight the saw you sec mages. So same zone. I went and fought the mages because they do a lot of fire casting. That's the one time I actually switched out an item. But other than that, I don't know that it really helped all that much with a five fire resist. But I like to think that it does. Um, I and uh, the e the exp I maintained level 40. I actually leveled during this with all the kills I was doing. Got to level 41, and then I de leveled myself back down to where I am now with a few more kills after the fact. So uh, <laughs> you can definitely get uh, some good experience solo. Um, of course, it's a lot of grinding. It's actually very slow in reality, but nonetheless, you are getting experience out of it, um, and we'll probably get a, a, a tad bit more with turning in the armor pieces. So with all that, uh, let's get into getting this armor. So let's talk about Lem Benstones real quick. So bringing up what they look like, it's a little blue jewel. They are lore items, and you can find them from Hill Giants, Sand Giants, um, and a bunch of named uh, griffins, uh, the name griffins and all that kind of stuff. So uh, really advantageous while you're in North Korea to kill all the trash and whatnot to make hill giants and griffins spawn. And I'll show you how you can use them to help you um, kill a lot of the different placeholders for that. And and even the, the griffins uh, for your, uh, your griffin charms. Um, and just to try to get more Lemben stones. So uh, these are the different areas, West Commons. All right, uh, East Karina, Wraith Mountains, North Karina, Northern Desert of Roe, Oasis of Mar, Southern Desert of Roe, and Western Plains of Karina. Um, and they are also sold by uh, merchants sometimes, so you might be able to chance upon them. And in that case, um, if you were to buy seven for the main seven pieces of visible armor, uh, it would be 322 platinum. There are about 46 plat each so if you wanted to do two bracers so you need eight total it'd be about 368 platinum to buy all of them and so this is kind of like the weird crux of the quest because they are lore so you can only have one at a time so if you get one limb stone you can turn in one you know the different items for one piece of armor and you have to run back out and get another one or whatever you have to do um so if you come to um Northern Karina, where I'm at now, um, you can bring alts here and whatnot, and uh, and um, have them loot extra ones if you happen to get them. I happen to have gotten all seven of mine here, um, in which case I was able to kind of switch out and have people come and help me just just loot them, and so that when I went and did all my turn-ins, um, I could do it all relatively quickly. But uh, yep, those are them. Let's uh, see how an another way we could use some charm kiting and um, all that to try to 
get them. So I'll just show you how you can do it and some reverse kiting as well to kill the hill giants and griffins here at level 40. So here's an interesting scenario uh, where I have more than one Lemben stone uh, drop for me. So And the corpse is already rotted, but what you can do is cycle through your stones. So I would drop this one on the ground and then pick up my other one. Um, because they are lore items, right, we can't have two on us at a time. But uh, you can cycle through in order to have someone come and pick up the other if, they, you know, if the corpse is going to rot. So just a little uh, trick there to... You know, help maximize your limb bend stones. Uh, if you know that they were coming from the druid rings or something, you could just simply from one from one bag right right here. You could count a few seconds or whatever, drop it, backtrack, pick up the other, and you know, just kind of like you know, leapfrogging them all the way to <laughs> to get somewhere if you really wanted to, but uh, not a big deal. Uh, of course, a landmark is a little bit easier in the for in the uh, for the most part, but um, yep, just something uh, I thought I'd share <laughs> in case you uh, you know can't carry more than one. Another way to find a limp stone is to um, run into a merchant that happens to be selling them. So like here, Mr. Raul, uh, the limp stone, he's selling them for forty six platinum, seven silver, six copper. So it's another way to get your stone. Okay, here's a, uh, a nice scenario where we can charm, or at least try to charm the hill giant. And we can have it attack a griffin. So he's flying over here. We don't want to damage the griffin with our own songs, but we will um, try to, or at least... We can just pull him over here. Charm broke, that's okay. And so we just have them, yeah, just fight each other. Makes it a lot easier and it goes a little bit faster. Um, just with your basic uh, 27 uh, charm song. So the hill giant's definitely stronger, so I'll just keep charming him until the uh, griffin goes down. The griffin is now running. Now really quickly, <laughs> since there's a, a griffin going by. Just have him fight them and take them down really quick. Let's wait for the charm break, then we'll go loot the griffin. Let's bring him right over here.
No Lamben stone, but that's okay. And there we go. And from here, oh, there's another there's another hill giant, so we can keep cycling through. And Grimfeather. <laughs> so we can just cycle through all these. And uh, that's, that's what we'll do real quick. See if we can get no charm. That's all right. Uh, what we can do is charm this hill giant now. To fight him. And just of hopes of getting Lamben stones, that helps you kill a little bit quicker. We could use them to kill all the different placeholders. I think Grimfeather went somewhere out here. Let's get ready to charm. There we go. And we could assist with some dots. And no stone again. So one thing we can try to do now, just to see if it if it will work, because I really don't know, is uh, trying the. There we go. We can um, reverse kite <laughs> the hill giants. So I'm just using Cello's uh, constant chain for our snare. Um, English is appalling screech for our fear and then two dots. So I start with food folds just because it is an MRD buffer and that will help land a uh, snare and our fear song. And so we just take them down and call it a day, but we'll keep doing this until we get, you know, an extra line bend stone. Uh, and then of course using them and we can kill all the, all the trash. So killing all the trash spawns all of these guys. I'm not really sure exactly which ones are the actual placeholders. I, guess, I always assume the silver Mist wolves, but um, yeah, it's just one way to do it. All right, let's start with the lamb bent breastplate. First thing we'll do is I uh, will note off on the wiki we'll go to Carissa here and hail. We'll say lamb bent armor, and for this we'll do the lamb bent breastplate. Uh, for this, uh, lamb bent breastplates are not cheap, but I can get you one if you bring me a few items that I need for. Later trades with the followers of Saliusek Row. Bring me a basalt carapace from a basalt gargoyle in the caverns of Guck, and a gypsy loot from the castle of Miss Moore. You will also need to see Jenny about getting me a lambent ruby. I collect these for me, and I will give you a lambent breastplate. So let us go through and get these items. Coming up next. All right, we are here in Miss Moore, and we're looking to get our gypsy loot for the lambent breastplate. Uh, so real quick. Let's just get a map going. Uh, right now we are at the entrance and uh, right here. And all we're going to do is we're going to run down uh, through the lake area. Make sure that you are in viz. We're going to go all the way down past the graveyard. We're going to go into the tunnel. And we're going to enter the uh, ramp to get up to the castle. We'll go through the castle entrance from here. You can go right or left. It doesn't matter. I usually go right and we'll go right into here. Uh, we want to be cautious because at night we could get undead. So this is where we'll start looking uh, just to be careful. And our ultimate goal is just to get over into this area uh, where we can either go on to the uh, hide in this little ledge area here at a sight from every, everything in the room, just to kind of explore it. Or there is an invisible wall here, which leads into a tunnel, uh, which is free and clear of mobs, nothing paths here. You can even use your AE dots in there if you wanted to. Um, and there's another invisible wall out the other side. And so we can fight in there, uh, which is what I'll probably end up doing. Uh, and we can clear some of the mobs that are, you know, in here just to free that up. So let's just go in there. Let's, uh, let's just start running. We have invis on. Uh, one thing you can do from the entrance is just simply track. Uh, this will tell us that we have, yep, uh, musicians are up. We have all three of them. There's always three. And, uh. That's kind of the confirmation that they are there, or they could be werewolves, either, either or. So we're just going to run in. Uh, just coming down here. I'm kind of strafing as we go. 
just to kind of speed it up. And we'll pop out here. We'll go up the ramp to the castle entrance. And from here, we'll just enter the castle. And we'll just go right or left. I'm just going right. It all leads to the same area. And through the entrance here. And so we'll kind of peek around the corners here. There's a Deathly Usher, which is good. On that side, we got two of them. Uh, we'll kind of hug in. They don't see Invis, so we'll hug in. We got another Deathly Usher there, too. Uh, and the goal will be just to come over here and look. And you can see that uh, we have musicians. And they have the Gypsy Lutes, uh, hopefully. And that's what that that's what that should be. So we'll uh, kind of work uh, on at least killing uh, these two ads. It just frees up a lot. Uh, there was a group out front, so they are killing the pathers that would walk in here. So there's up to three pathers that will come into the room, uh, which will make it a little bit harder. And it's also usually a gypsy dancer over here who just paths back and forth. They do not have any loots or any. She does not have a loot or anything like that. So if anything, you just want to lull them. Uh, be careful with these gypsies. They can backstab, so don't turn your back to them. They can backstab very hard, over 100 points of damage, uh, very easily and quickly. <laughs> so, uh, and what we'll do is, um, you can either you could fight right here um, along the edge. You can actually drop your invis if you wanted to, and you can sit and all that. As long as you don't pass the line of sight of the pillars and go over the wall, um, you'll be good to go. But uh, what we'll ultimately do, let me throw back on Invis here. We will pull all of these mobs into this area here. So before the door, there's this wall. And all we got to do is go through it. And you have the a secret hallway. And this is where we can fight mobs. And if you really wanted to, you could kite them back and forth. Um, just be careful popping out the other side and aggroing any gargoyles or anything like that. Which you really shouldn't be doing anyways. But... Cool, that is what we'll do. So let's uh, get our gypsy loot. All right, so in the gypsy room, we see one of the magician, one of the uh, gypsies has the loot in their hand. So we'll try to pull her. I just clear the uh, two that are out here, so it makes it a little bit easier. And we'll see if we can get her solo. We'll try to pull through the middle here. I'm gonna lull. Up, oh, we have a pather coming through. So let's wait. So this is a really good example here. She actually has buffed this one. So it might be good to maybe dispel her once we get her solo. Give it a mez, maybe yeah, give it her a dispel or something like that. And we'll be good to go. For this, uh, if she paths through the other gypsies, she might aggro her as well. The dancer is also aggroable. So there's four. Might have to clear the dancer first. Oh, we got her. <laughs> or before the other. So that's really good. Okay, just uh, hit it with the Mez, and let's see here. Uh, we'll get rid of Lol. I want to get my single target on. Of course, you didn't Mez it all the way. Let's see here. Just giving that a second here. Running back and forth here, real quick. So, make sure that everything is off because it just makes it a lot easier to kill. So, as soon as she breaks again, okay, I uh, assume she should be good. I should heal up a tiny bit and we'll just get to work and try to chip her down. 
So hopefully it is just a normal, I believe it is just a normal gypsy loot. Hit it with two dots and we'll see what works the best here. Yeah, she's actually dying pretty quickly, so she is. Oh yeah, higher, higher green con. So she should die a little bit quicker. go we got the gypsy loot and that's for the breastplate it's a pretty cool easy day and we'll move into the next piece all right so we're in the lower gut we're looking to get to the basalt gargoyles to get that carapace uh, so looking at the map here all we're going to do is from the live side uh, this is a little bit easier so right now i'm standing right about here but we'll zone in uh come down to where i am and then we can invis and uh down all the way like this. We're gonna hug the hug the wall, go all the way up, um, up here, come down to the Minotaur area, come around. We can levitate or just try to jump over. There's an invisible uh, trap right here that you'll fall down into. It's like a little pit. But as long as you're in Viz, you should be fine. And all you gotta do is climb out of the ladder, go over back around, and try again. Uh, so, anyways, uh, going over that, uh, we're just gonna go all the way through to the dead side and this is where we're going to end up and pop out where the basal gargoyles are and we'll take care of business there so also on the on my end parse up here on the corner you see where uh, i'm going and let's invis and run so just straight down here I just hug the right wall. I'll take you all the way down. So here, uh, I'll just keep going straight to the right, and it'll be this first left. We'll hug the wall again. So we get to the uh, next right, uh, just by notice by two of these frog locks. They're usually always up. No one's ever really down here that often. Uh, keep going. Minotaur room here. And we'll just go right here. I'll just throw on levitate just to, just for a, sorry, it's right here where the, where the trap is. But that's it. I'll get invis back on if you do that. Cool. Uh, the last room of frogs here until we get up these ramps and then up the ladder well here. Uh, you'll enter this room and then right through this door will be the gargoyles. So you have one, two, three. Uh, so this is all we're gonna. This is all we're gonna do. We actually, we will lull and fight in, in this room. Uh, I make it real simple. I'll just show two different ways of killing them. All right, got ourselves a basalt gargoyle from right outside the door there, and we'll get weapons on. Let's see what we can get.
So an even fight most of the time. Uh, he can hit you, of course, in the in the 60s and whatnot. Um, so they hit, still hit pretty hard. One on one. But nonetheless, we're chipping them down. Yeah, 65 isn't too kind. And there we go. We got our basalt carapace. Cool. Easy day. And now we'll go turn them in. All right. So the final piece here, we need our lamben ruby. So to do this, uh, from the text, right when we talk to um, Carissa, she points us towards Jenny. When you go through that text, uh, talking to Jenny, uh, you'll see that uh, she tells you that my sister. Felicia holds the secrets of making a ruby lemben stone. Though she will not speak of it, if you give her two rubies and a lemben stone, she will make you a ruby lemben. So let's do that now. So we have our lemben stone. And we'll separate the rubies here one at a time. So verify that they are a ruby and a ruby. And we'll give her those. And there we go. Uh, here is your lemben ruby. Bam. There we go. So now let's go turn everything in. So we're back down, just jumping off the ledge here, back down to Carissa. And again, we have achieved our gypsy loot, basalt carapace, and lambent ruby. So let us give those to her. Bada bing, bada boom. Exception, exceptionally well done, McTwisty. Here is your lambent breastplate. Wear it with pride. And indeed we will. So there we go. Got our new shiny Lambent Breastplate. Um, good hit points on that. Uh, good AC. And there we go. On to the next. All right, we're looking to get the Lambent Helm and Carissa Star Dreamer here. And Sayu Six Temple gives the quest. So upon hailing her, we'll say Lambent Armor and then Lambent helm. Uh, and with that, she says, uh, I can give you a lambent helm, but you will need to fetch for me a few items um, that I need for later trades with the followers of Sayusik Row. I require an opaline helm from a from a deep water goblin and a mud water rune from a lizard fanatic in Kazakh Thule. Finally, you will also need to see Jenny about getting me a lambent star ruby. Bring me these items and I'll give you the lambent helm. So with that, um, kind of coming back to the wiki page here for the lambent helm. Uh, again, the Mudwater Rune can drop from either a Lizard Zealot or a Lizard Fanatic in Kha'Zix Thule. Uh, and an Opaline Helm, Opaline Helm from a Deepwater Goblin in Oasis of Mar, or you can uh, fight these in Lake Wrath Tier. Uh, underneath and in, underneath the island there, underwater. I think it's more ideal to fight on land for the most part. But uh, hey, either route works, I'm going to do it in Oasis of Mar. And lastly, uh, we need a Lambent Star Ruby, so we will need another Lambent stone and two star rubies that we will give to Jenny to get that and then turn them all back in to Carissa here. So with that, let's get to it. All right, welcome to Kazik Thule. We are looking for the mud water rune that drops from uh, lizard zealots and fanatics. And with that, uh, this is a uh, kind of a crazy zone to be in. A lot of stuff all over the place and kind of chaotic to learn if it's your first time in here. Uh, Invis is your friend. Uh, even these mobs at the entrance will aggro me at level 40 just by standing near them. So I was thinking about pulling mobs maybe to the entrance and reverse kiting. But uh, they will aggro unless you just clear them out first. Not a big deal. But whatever. Um, so uh, we're looking for certain areas, right? They spawn all over the place. Random spawns to find the zealots and the fanatics. Uh, we can run into like this temple area over here. There might, you know, there's one or two within. Um, a lot of ads though. So we'll see about lulling and trying to pull them out. Uh, down these other halls, there are rooms with uh, lizards in them and whatnot, and all the way out to this other temple. Uh, this is on the top of, um, I think, the Avatar room, right? I think uh, the other 
pyramid is on is over here at, at the top uh, and there's lizards all around the place uh, a lot of them heal the judicators and the justicars they all heal and stuff and they're a real nuance to try to take down and they all hit hard as well so also conning everything some of these guys see invis so you need to be careful when going through some of these tunnels with uh, rooms uh, you know attached to them uh, there's sometimes two in a room most of the time um, and all that and then uh, we'll kind of just show what they look like real quick so invis is on uh, we'll just run out into the main area here there is no zealots or fanatics out here but um, you can come right in there's a fanatic here or wh or whatever else pops there they i think i think it's just random but blue con so we can just fight them there uh coming down to the heat into these areas um use that camera to kind of swivel around there's a just a car it's not just a lizard he's just a car <laughs> um and there is another mob in there if you can't see it i would recommend using uh lisa's Lissa's uh, Solidarity of Vision. And what we'll do is we'll just scoot over a little bit. Get him. Bam. There's the other one in the room. And, well, threateningly because I'm not in Viz. Let's see. Yep. Uh, he does not see in Viz. So that is good. So cool. That means we can go by the room. And as long as we don't touch him or anyone else touches him, then they won't see in Viz. So cool. Coming over to this one. There is a Zealot right there. So we already found one fanatic, one zealot, and we see we got a Judy, adjudicator in there, doesn't see in viz. So cool. Um, and just going through these different tunnels and whatnot, um, again, we'll just chip away, see if we can get a rune, hopefully one, you know, relatively fast, <laughs> and we'll kind of show if we need to switch up tactics or not. This is the other temple area. Oh, there's a zealot, making sure these guys... <clears throat> don't see a lot of these guys will heal so if you try to pull him into a corner or something like that maybe lull him through and get him out Ooh, what's this guy okay he's indifferent as well um but yeah uh temple oh, no, another zealot more mobs there's stuff everywhere so we'll kind of develop our tactics see what these guys can really hit for and try to get our rune this is kind of funny. I got a zealot here, and these guys hit pretty darn hard. I've already had a heal up once, and what I'm doing is <laughs> I'm uh, snaring and dotting. Got my drum on. Oh, he's actually running. Uh, and I have mez, so I'm doing a four song twist, and I'll mez as soon as I get close enough. I mez, and then I jump past them and go back down the other. The other way on the hall. So just a cool little sneaky method there to uh, <laughs> you could uh, kite them down in in a hallway like that, given you know just enough room. I'm going through the door, which works. No rune, but that's just something uh, kind of funny. I thought I'd share. All right, kill seventeen here. Um, looking for that mudded rune, mud water, <laughs> mudded rune. The mud water rune. There it is. We got it finally. <laughs> Holy moly. There it is. The old kite tactic the entire time. Actually, it's some fine steel. Um, cool. 17 kills. Uh, it's taking some time, especially, you know, uh, getting judicators and stuff like that and just the cars aggroing, you know, mezzing, zoning them out. But uh, it's definitely possible. And I got it. Uh, the one I pulled is all the way down here at the end. Um, hope I'm facing the right way. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. On to the next. Alrighty, we're here in Oasis of Mar, just southwest of the uh, Spectre Island, down near the corner here. Uh, what we're looking for is the underwater goblins. So here on the map, real quick, uh, this is just showing. Um, we're right here at, at number ten. That's where we're gonna go. I'm just standing right off to the side over here, uh, and ten is the Aqua Goblin Tower. So that's where we're gonna go to try to get the Opalin Opalin Helm. Uh, these guys pack a punch, so we'll try a few different methods here. As you can see, uh, sorry, I got here on the map. Uh, I'm right down here. But anyways, we'll go underwater here in Viz and to this underwater tower uh, where the goblins are, the deep water goblins. And uh, see what we can do. I'm going to see if we have the lull or not. Uh, see if we can get some single pulls, and hopefully we will get the helm. Uh, we're going to try, I'll, I'll try just straight up melee 
And then if that's not working, I will try reverse kiting or kiting in general. These guys do cast and they can heal and all that kind of thing. So uh, reverse kiting might be the way, but uh, we will figure that out here in a moment. All right, so a little trial and error. I like to pose a new uh, kiting uh, position here. Um, melee style is not feasible. Um, when, when we pull a mob out, uh, I thought we could fear kite along or reverse kite along the coastlines. Uh, this is not a good idea. They could run into the water and cause line of sight issues, and that just takes all day. These guys blast for over 200 you know, points of damage a cast. They can root you, dispel, and all that stuff. So I got a cool little myth that I figured out. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to mez a goblin first. That gives us time to escape out of the water unscathed. And then uh, we'll, wait, I'll, we'll kind of wait on the hill up here to kind of uh, wait for them to pop out of the water. And then we'll continue down over here. And it kind of slopes down where we could be out of the line of sight of the goblin and cast. So as soon as he comes in, we'll hit him with fear, pop out of our little hiding spot, and uh, <laughs> just reverse kite him. And I'll kind of talk through a little bit more as we go. So let's do it. Let's get in here. Um, also, there's a, there's a three spawn. So right here, these are pretty much the three goblins I can keep under wraps most of the time. So we'll just go over to this one. Um, just close enough to get that mez on. There we go. So mez them first, run right out. We can see that the eye is glazed over. That's our that's our sign. Not even healed up all the way. So we'll ha we'll just chill right up here on this little on the sand dune real quick. Hopefully the sand giant doesn't spawn behind me, but that's all right. Either way, let's get a little extra healing. Drums are on. Uh, so due to the damage shield these guys have, I'm um, just holding off on weapons. And then we're going to reverse kite just using our two dots. Okay, there he is. So let's run him right over here. So there's a zone out to the south row. But we'll just go right down here. Bam. Kind of give a little peek over. Kind of time it here. Oop, there we go. One, two, three. Bam. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Snare next. I'm going to hit him again with my fear just because I like to keep it in that order. And now I go to Foofles. That's another, again, the magic resist debuffer. And he resisted the champ, but don't worry. Prioritize that snare. Prioritize the fear. And then we can get snare on later. Uh, so resisted fear there. Cool. So pretty neat. <laughs> I just kind of figured that out. I was like, man, because they would be on top of that. They'd be way over here casting already. And I was like, well, I really don't want to fear them and start my kite out there. I want to be nice and close to the edge. So that's how I kind of figured that out. <laughs> this is it. Uh, so then I'll give him a little melee hit, see if he has the uh, thorns on. Oh, he doesn't. So actually, we can switch the guns. Let's get him. Start whacking him. Usually I just I just wait for the uh, damage shield to wear off. It only takes a few minutes usually, but uh, I still think our weapons will out DPS the dots in the long run, and then you know stacked with the dots is even better. So we actually got to resist on the snare. Let's get that back on and hit him again with the fear. Keep my my order going. Cool. This is actually what this will be the ninth goblin. So we'll see if we get a helm at this point. Uh, and it's kind of nice that they keep that we kill the ones that keep respawning because it might that might increase our chances a little bit. Uh, we just don't kill fast enough to get all the goblins in the entire tower at level 40 here with some basic gear. But nonetheless, we are doing it. Um, and you'll see, uh, I you know implore you to, to try a little bit of trial and error yourself, so you can see what I'm actually talking about. Uh, these guys just they they, they, they just crush my face. Uh, they slap, <laughs> they slap hard. Uh, they're hitting in the 60s. They could double in the 60s, uh, whatever the heck they were doing, um, and do it very quickly. Plus their um, spells. Whoop. Hey, you get up, get away from me. Um, and keep that head on the swivel. I usually try to do it in the third person so that I can see around me more so. Because uh, there is a sand The dude's popping the sand giant. So, uh, yeah, he is. So, shout out to him, too. That's cool. 
get some sandies. Some giant sandwiches. I'm getting about 1% of, e of EXP per kill, so I mean, it's actually moving up quite nicely. So you kill 100 of these, go through a whole level. <laughs> well, that'd be tedious. So he's running. Again, just keep the uh, keep the fear on all the way. Don't don't stop. You don't want him to have to stop and try to heal or something. Stay behind him. Hit his little goblin butt crack. <laughs> Make sure we're not getting anything crazy back here. See, so yeah, I died once already. This will be the ninth kill now after I've kind of figured out this little system here. No helm. That's right, we'll keep going uh, until we get it. Alright, this will be the 11th Goblin. And there it is, baby. Opalin Helm. <laughs> cool. 11 Goblins, 1 death uh, through trial and error. And we got it. So, all good. Cool. Um, yep, on to the next. All right, we made it, and we have the items needed for the Lambent Helm. We have our Mud Water Rune, we have our Opalin Helm, and our Lambent Stone, and two Star Ruby. So first off, let's go get the Lambent Star Ruby from Jenny. So from the main room, I'm just going to come back out. Up the stairs. And we find Jenny here in the room. So we'll give her a hail. We'll say lamb bent. Stones. And star. Ruby uh, lamb bent. So star, uh, to make a star ruby lamb bent stone, you must give me two star rubies and a lamb bent stone. Lamb bent stones can be found on hill giants, sand giants, and griffins. So cool. Let us turn these in. So one lamb bend stone, and we'll separate the star rubies just in case. Verify that, th that they are all, in fact, the right items, and we'll turn them in. And there we go. We have our lamb bent star ruby. So with that, let's go back out and jump down for the final turn in. Just going to jump over the ledge here, and we'll head back to Carissa. And uh, again, from before... Right, we just need to turn in our items, so we'll do that now. So one mud water rune, one opalin helm, and one lambent star ruby to achieve our new and shiny improved lambent helm. So there we go. So congratulations on that. One more down. On to the next. Okay, we are looking to get our Lambent Van Braces. So upon hailing uh, Carissa and saying Lambent Armor and Lambent Van Braces, uh, she tells you that I will give you Lambent Van Braces if you can acquire the following items for me. Fiery Van Braces from a Solusec Champion and the top portion of the Rune of the One Eye from a Cyclops named Chun. You will also need to see Jenny about getting me a Lambent Sapphire. Acquire these items for me, and I will give you the Lambent Van Braces. So, uh, with this, um, we look at the wiki again. So, the Lambent Van Braces. Again, we're going to go to Solusex I to fight champions for the Fairy Van Braces. And we will kill and annihilate Mr. Chun uh, in West Karena for the Rune of the One Eye, the top portion. Um, and acquire another Lambent Stone and two Sapphires, which will turn into. Uh, Gardern uh, to get that as well. So with that, let's get to it. All right, we are in Sol U Sex I or Sol A, as it can be called, and we're looking to get the 
uh, solusec champions to get our uh, our fairy uh, van braces. And so uh, to get there, let's look at a map real quick. These are just melee style mobs. Um, right now we are here at the Lava Storm Mountain entrance. Uh, just make sure your invis is on. Uh, so mobs don't aggro you while sitting or whatever. But anyways, we'll come down. We're going to go around these steps here. And we're going to go through. We'll, we'll note a little hole in the wall that you can jump through. Um, or you can just run around and enter this room. And what we're going to do is just we're going to go straight and jump down uh, through a door here. And go straight down. There's a, like a few doors and in, in the uh, main gate to get into the main areas. And then we're going to go right. And... We'll just note some mobs here. We want to consider everything because some can see in viz. Um, but nonetheless, you want to get down all the way uh, to this area. Um, here is a goblin banker over here. So if you ever needed the bank or anything, you can sneak uh, behind him and then you can bank. Anyways, uh, pending that, um, the champions can spawn here or in the king room over here. As you can see, there is a tunnel here. There is an invisible wall right here that we'll run through. This whole tunnel is empty. Nothing paths in here. And you can use that to your advantage to kite or whatever. But we'll come over here. We'll just use some uh, camera angles and, tr and tricks and what, what not to see how many mobs are in there. There's usually three. And we'll just lull, lull them and pull them out. There are typically three mobs in this room. Um, one in the middle and two on the sides. They don't aggro. I have never got them to aggro. And I don't, and I don't get close to the door either. I just go in, tag, pull them out. Uh, over here, there is another like a little pather guy, or he's uh, maybe he's static, but he might go in and out. So you need to be cautious about an extra add in this room over here if you're going to pull the champions. So let's get to it. Let's run uh, down and just so you can get a visual reference. So um, just come down the steps here, making sure Invis is on. Con the mob um, to get into this. You can jump up while while running. Oh, I'm actually fatigued. So you can jump up and duck. <laughs> I'm out of uh, food. I guess that's not good. So we'll just go right out, right on around. Not a big deal. There's a swinging axe. Just go right through that, and we're in the same exact spot. Cool. So, anyways, um, it was go straight. Uh, you can turn left or right, but we're gonna go straight. Jump down through the door and through the gate, and we're gonna turn right. Um, I typically like to uh, tab target to see if there is anything. There might be a, a wanderer that passed through here. And sometimes he sees invis, like a wizard. Um, open the door again. Another one will path over here occasionally. So I would just look out all around the walls. Nothing there. We can come down here and we see the goblin merchant. And you can sell to him. I think I, I mistakenly said a banker, but you can sell it to him uh, by sneaking behind him. So anyways, we'll get down here. You can go left or right. We want to go right through the door and bam, there we go. The champion and another champion. So two champions there and you want to keep killing those. Sometimes you get placeholders, some of the other ones, the priest or something. Um, and then there's another one. There's a door behind this door uh, that has one extra mob. So lull those guys and then you can pull them out right down here. And you'll note that there is a wall. Just go through it and you have this entire hallway to fight in so I would recommend either either pulling them out of course you can fight them wherever you want but you can go right into the wall bam and this way will also lead down to the king room so there's a little back back entry here so all I like to do I like to just hug the wall here you can open the door and you can see we have uh, two champions sometimes it can be the king right here in the middle um, and sometimes another champion, but it's a priest, so you just cycle through these three and the other two, and you should be good to go. These are a little bit easier. Um, if it was a wizard or whatnot, I'd definitely have the spell. Uh, they can have some uh, fire damage shield on. So cool. And you can consider all those. Actually, the priest is ready to attack. I did not consider. Um, but yeah, the other two don't see invis, but sometimes they can, so that is it. So these that is how you get down to the uh, champions, or to get down to the champions. So this is my sixth uh, champion. So see if we can get the arms here. Um, still using Snare Song, Psalm of Warmth for damage shield, and two dots. 
There we go. <laughs> there we go. Fire man braces. So it took six kills to get those. Actually kind of nice with the uh, fire res there. Or some other stuff. But uh, yeah, cool. On to the next. This came from the king's room. Um, so real quick, just showing you uh, where this was. There's only one left in there, which is another regular goblin. But there are three. And uh, there were two champions. And that was the second one during this round. So pretty cool. On to the next. Alrighty, we are in Western Karina, West Karina, and uh, I'm at the zone line here from uh, North Karina, and all we're going to do is pretty much run straight over to the middle over here on the map. I'll kind of draw that out uh, here, um, just wherever we are, we're over here somewhere, but yeah, all we're going to aim for is going straight out here. Uh, you'll see Froon and Chun out here. They're staring at a giant pillar. Um, that's their hobby. And good on them, and that's what we will do. We'll run there and set up shop, get some runes from Froon and Chun. Alrighty, we got Froon and Chun, big Cyclops brothers. And as you can see on the map, here is where I am facing them. Uh, try some tactics here. Uh, might try some charm. Maybe we can charm them and have them fight each other. They are blue. Uh, and then just dot them down after the fact, and I think that might be more feasible way to do this. Let's figure it out here. We already have dots up as it is. Um, yeah, let's give it a whirl. We'll get rid of the maps. Make sure I get my keys set for charm breaks. Oop, yeah, and maybe cellos would be nice. Oop, fighting in the tree. Neck and necks, Cyclops dancing. Oop, attack. Let's get rid of tracking here. So Froon, Chun, neck and neck here. I think we can get another good charm in. Okay, we got a, a break, so let's just dot them down. And go from there. <laughs> Just kind of run them in circles. Nice big circles. They have large character models, so not really good for AE kiting. Be pretty nice if they both drop their respective runes. I guess I could charm Froon to kill him. Whatever, doesn't matter. It's the adventure. Alright, let's switch it over to Froon. Oh, he's running. Cool. Get him down, see what we get. 
Come on, Froon. Let's get another weapon on there. Cool, so for Froon. Ah, oh, no Rune. You let me down, Froon. Chun, here we go. We got Chun's Rune. <laughs> so Rune of the One Eye. Uh, try to put that in a place where you remember. I guess I'll put it in this bag and I'll I'll know Chun and then Froon alphabetical. <laughs> Be the way to remember. And then of course we'll get uh, probably identify the identify song just to ensure that we get the right one when we turn it in. So we'll come back and we'll we'll get Froon's uh, Rune. We are back in Temple of Saisa Row. We're looking to turn in our Lamb Van Braces. So according to the text, uh, we need to speak to Jenny about getting a Lamb Van Sapphire. So let us do that. Let's run up here real quick. Uh, be very careful in this portion of the quest. Even though it says uh, you need to talk to Jenny to get one, uh, we'll see here in a moment that she does not give you the Lamb Van Sapphire. Someone else does. So upon talking to Jenny here, uh, after hailing her, saying Lambent Stones and Lambent Sapphire, uh, she will tell you that my brother Gardern holds the secret to making Lambent, to making Sapphire Lambent Stones. Though he will not speak of it, if you give him two Sapphires and a Lambent Stone, he will make you a Sapphire Lambent. So we need to go talk to her brother Gardern. So we'll go back down. Mr. Gardern, right out here. And with that information, we'll just give him a Lamb Bend Stone and two Sapphires, ensure that they are, in fact, Sapphires, and we'll split them apart. And we'll hit it, give him in. And with that, we have our Lamb Bend Sapphire. So we'll jump down over the ledge here, turn around back to Carissa, and ensure that we have our pieces. So we have our Fiery, Fury Van Braces, our Rune of the One Eye, and Lambent Sapphire. Now this is also important, ensure that this is the correct one. We can do that with our song, Lisa's Cataloging Libretto. And what you'll do is you'll target yourself, you'll hold the rune in your hand, and then uh, click the song, sing the song. And with that it says, Item Lore, Rune of the One Eye, top, right here. So we definitely want that. And that will ensure that we have the correct uh, rune. So, with that information, let's give, let's turn them in. So we have our Fury Van Braces, uh, Rune of the One Eye, and Lamban Sapphire. And there we go. Got some new shiny new Lamban arms. So pretty cool. Two to all resist. One Charisma, eleven AC, and most importantly, we got those cool blue arms. So awesome, congrats on that. On to the next. All right, we are back here at Carissa and we are looking to get our lamb band bracers. So with that, if we just type in lamb band bracers, she will tell us that lamb band bracers are nice armor and do not have the same level of complexity that other lamb band armor possesses. If you can fetch for me a dark bone bracelet from a greater dark bone skeleton, a griffin charm from the griffin, and a lamb band fire opal, then I will give you the lamb band bracer. Uh, looking at the wiki real quick, here at the Lamb Band Bracer section, uh, we can see that the Dark Bone uh, Bracelet is dropped from a Greater Dark Bone in the Estates of Unrest. And a Griffin Charm is dropped by a Griffin uh, in North Kar Karana. And we will need to acquire a Lamb Band Fire Opal. Uh, so we will need to acquire an an another Lamb Band Stone and two Fire Opals, in which case we will turn those into Mr. Ostorm. So with that in info, let's get to it. All right, welcome to Unrest. We are here and we are looking to get our Dark Bone bracelets from the Greater Dark Bone Skeletons. Uh, so real quick, let's just throw up a map of where we are. We are here at the entrance right now. And all we're really gonna do is run in uh, to the mansion. We're gonna hang a left. We're gonna go two doors down and hang a left into that, uh, through that door. And there will be a bookcase right here. And you can click that bookcase and go right in. Uh, just kind of be cautious. There are mobs kind of hidden around corners and whatnot. There will be two mobs right inside. Uh, so don't go trucking in if you've never been in there and you don't know what you're really getting into. 
Um, and down and down here, this leads into the basement areas, and there we should uh, be able to find a lot of greater dark bones, or at least be able to kill the mobs to make those guys pop up. Um, you can also go up into the you know second and third floors, or however you want to uh, tackle it, and there are other ones up there, and you might have to get them to spawn as well. So you don't have to go into the basement; you can go throughout the uh, throughout the house to get these guys to pop, and hopefully get our dark bone bracelet. So, practicality, let's just run in real quick. We're going to go right through the doors here. We're going to hang a left. And second door on the left. Uh, we'll go through that. And we'll see the bookcase here. Uh, we'll just note that behind this door, there is a little hidden cubby here. And there's a dark bone skeleton in there. Uh, but we need the uh, greater dark bones but you can kill these guys. He may pop as one. I'm not really entirely sure um, in hopes of getting one. So we open the door and we can see that there are there's a greater dark bone right here and a bar bone skeleton. So there is a greater dark bone ready for us. But just uh, to show you, uh, we're going to lull these guys and run by. And we're just going to show you a little bit deeper in the zone here. So we'll go down and we'll just hug around the corner here into the basement area. So down here, be very cautious. Use the pillars and the camera angles to your advantage. You can see uh, there are mobs all over the place here. And look at that, we got some more greater dark bones, festering hags, uh, two of those, another greater dark bone. Uh, if you kind of come up here, uh, dusty werebat. A lot of these guys are all, you know, high greens. So really not too difficult, another werebat. Um, but you would kill all these guys to make more greater dark bones uh, pop up if you don't get the bracelet from any one of them. So this is a, a kind of like a main area here. Um, so this is where I'm going to fight and hopefully we get our dark bone bracelet. All right, this is my second uh, greater dark bone. I'm actually a little bit low on lower on health just because uh, I fought two back to back. Um, so cool. I'm using uh, still a basic song lineup of uh, Cellus Constant Chain for Staring Slow. Uh, Psalm of Cooling for Damage Shield and two dots fire and uh, foofles. So let's see if we can get ourselves a nice dark bone bracelet. Bam! There it is. <laughs> dark bone bracelet for our lamb bent bracers. Easy day. Uh, that's how I did it. I'm just uh, kind of coming out here, hug the walls or not hug it, but I mean, uh, there's mobs all in each of these little cubbies here. As you can see, some other festering hags and whatnot, but we can take care of them all. Um, dusty werebats. Uh, they're all green or high green for the most part. So, I mean, at level 40, they're not too, they're not too, uh, they're, they're, they're definitely manageable. <laughs> but cool. Uh, on to the next. Alrighty, welcome to the northern plains of Karana. Karana? Karana? I don't know. Um, but uh, we are here for the Griffin Charm. So, if we pull up the wiki page real quick, um, we're looking for the Griffin Charm here from a Griffin, 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 however you want to say it, level 23 here in North Karena. One cool thing about this is if you click on uh, Griffin, um, these are what they look like. They all look like these flying eagle, you know, talon birds, uh, pretty cool. And uh, uh, warrior classes, these are very easy to fight and kill. Um, and there are three types of these, right? The griffins being probably the, the, the weakest of the different types of griffins. You also have the griffons. Uh, I guess that's how you say it, griffons. Uh, and these guys are everywhere most of the time. So I kill a lot of these in order to get the griffins to spawn. And also you can get the big daddy griffins to spawn. So griffins are the highest one. These are blue to us at level 40. Uh, these guys are also good to kill because they also drop lambent stones. Another really good tactic I used was to charm a griffin, and you could just obliterate all the mobs. So if you're trying to collect more Lamben stones, um, if you can uh, run some alternate characters over or have friends pick them up, uh, you want to kill all the trash and all the things like the silver mist wolves and the lions and all of the bears and stuff. And um, that tended to make the hill giants spawn as well, as well as more griffins. And you can charm these guys, or you can charm a griffin to fight a hill giant and help you out. And it'll crush to them, and they can drop lamb bend stones as well. So, a good opportunity to kind of uh, get some of those and um, 
you know, to help with your armor quest. Cool. So, well, what are we doing here? What are we looking for in the zone itself? Uh, let's pull up the map real quick. So, again, if you uh, are on the Griffin Wiki page, uh, you can pull up the various maps, uh, which is what this is. So this is made by a courteous player long ago. Um, so, three basic spawn points. Um, I actually, the ones that I had found and killed were uh, actually out here somewhere. Um, so this in orange. Um, I'm actually at the Druid Ring right now. That's where the Druid Ring is. Uh, so initially when I come out, I'm basically running a circle around the zone and tracking where all these are and killing all the Griffons and Griffins and whatever else I can to get the Griffins to, to pop up. Um, and anything else, and then after that, then I'll go back and start killing all the trash to make other things spawn. And you might get some named and, and things like that, some werewolves, some lane, some named lions, um, and some other wolves as well. But uh, for the most part, you know, focusing on the Griffin charm, uh, these guys will pass back and forth wherever you go. And so, because our tracking is a lot smaller than a druid and definitely a ranger. Um, Always looking uh, when 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 you come in, it's good to do like, hey, is there like a camp check? Are people actually hunting them? Because the rangers will basically spot them before you do, anyways. Even though we could outrun them potentially, um, you know, it's kind of weird to fight for camps and all that. But when you've been here for a few hours, you know, you start telling people, hey, please, I'm really looking for this thing. I've been here a long time. Uh, just you know, kind of respectful, whatever. They're open camps, but uh, or you can camp a single spawn point, but. Uh, yeah, for the most part, um, that's what I would do. And then uh, the respawn time on most of these is about 6 minutes, 6.40 it says down here. I know on the wiki it does say 6 minute respawn. Uh, and I would just keep a nice big circle going just in case. Uh, with solo speed, it's not it doesn't take that long. And so I would just kind of go through, make sure I hit the timers right. I just time it on my desktop for 6 minutes and I know when the next wave uh, around should spawn. And so that's how I did it. And so we'll get to work, start killing some Griffons, Griffines, Griffoons, whatever, and get our charm. So let's get to it. All right, another Griffine. Uh, this is number 14 thus far. Um, yeah, uh, just the old uh, tank and spank method here. Nothing fancy. Uh, two dots and cellos for the snare, slow, whatever. Um, and a lot of placeholders so we've been here I've been here a few hours now and it's been a drag <laughs> it's probably the longest the most tedious one I think it's just killing all the, the griffins and griffons and wands and ons you have all these different uh, uh, suffixes there um, gri griffine griffon yeah, whatever. But, uh, let's see, chipping away. Let's see if we can get our charm. Dinata. Alrighty, number 15, exactly, and Griffin Charm in hand. Man, what a pain in the butt. <laughs> that is uh, that is it. Um, yeah, just you gotta keep killing them, you gotta get them to, to pop up. And uh, and just and you can just tank them at level 40 again. You can just, of course, dot dot, I just do dot dot cellos, uh, snare. Um, and that's it, and then just beat them on down. But that is the Griffin Charm. Alright, we are back in the Temple of Salyusek Row, and we want to turn in our Lambent Bracer quest pieces. But first, we need to get a Lambent Fire Opal. So let's run up to Jenny and find out how to do that. So, while we're doing that, also, it's realized that all the items are lore for each bracer. So if you want another one, you would have to go back to the uh, zones again and acquire the pieces. Uh, one more time around and that's to include another uh, Ben stone so okay we arrive at Jenny and if you just say fire opal she'll tell you that my brother Ostorm holds a secret to making a fire opal and Ben stones uh, though he will not speak of it if you give him 
uh, two fire opals and a lembent stone, he will make you a fire opal lembent. If you are interested, I can sell you a fire opal. So if you type in sell, she will tell you that I will sell you a fire opal for 550 gold coins. Remember gold, the metal of fire for the gem of fire. So with that, we'll give her 550 gold. And we achieved uh, one uh, fire opal. And let's get one more since we will need two. And there we go. And now we will go to her brother Ostrom here and turn in the Lamben stone and both fire opals. Just ensuring that they are fire opals and a Lamben stone and we'll give them to him. And there we are. Ah, Jenny must have sent you to me very well. Here is your Lemben Fire Opal. And there it is. So with that, we'll come back out. Jumping over the ledge, back to uh, Chrissia, and we'll turn in the Dark Bone Bracelet, our Griffin Charm, and our Fire Opal, or Lemben Fire Opal. Give those to her and we have our new shiny lamb bracers so four strength one charisma nine ac pretty nice but what's even better we have our new lamb bracers with the cool blue congratulations on that on to the next we are now ready to start our quest for the lamb greaves so with that uh, now we'll start talking to walton here mr fire weaver and we'll say Lemben Greaves, and he tells us, There are no finer leggings for a bard than Lemben Greaves. Collect for me two lesser pair of Greaves, and I will give you some. Bring me Icy Greaves from an elite goblin guard in the caverns of Permafrost, and Shin Greaves from a Shin Ghoul Knight, as well as a Lemben Fire Opal, and I will gift you a pair of Greaves. So with that, again, looking at the wiki page, here at the Lemben Greaves, uh, Icy Greaves from an elite goblin guard in Permafrost, uh, that'll be Kind of a hike uh, in this expansion now we can now port to uh, surfall glade so that makes it a little bit easier nonetheless uh, and then we will acquire our shin greaves from any of these ghouls uh, either the shin ghoul knight or a froglock shin warrior in upper guck or lower guck uh, i will do this in lower guck I, I think and we will acquire another fire uh, lambent fire opal so we need one more lambent stone and two fire opals uh, to Ostrom. Remember that we need to buy these from Jenny first and then hand them into Ostrom. So with that, let's get to it. So welcome to Permafrost. We're looking for the Elite Goblin Guards and uh, we need those to get the Icy Greaves for our Lamb Vent Legs. So real quick, um, Elite Goblin Guards, if you pull up this on the wiki, um, or even in the description, uh, it says a reliable method for killing these as a bard solo is to camp under the most eastern part of the ledge in the king's room. So number three, uh, with some smart lulling and viz and pulling, it is pretty straightforward kill rotation. It is a pretty straightforward kill rotation. So I think we're going to do exactly that <laughs> and keep it out of the line of sight of other things, right? There's going to be a lot. There are C and viz in the room, and uh, we'll take care of that as we get to it, and I'll be able to show you uh, real quick a map. So, um, of course, we are down at the entrance. Uh, right here. So our goal will be to get to uh, area three up, up, up top here. This is the main area. Um, to get there, we are going to just invis and go down and go up the ladder through the uh, tunnels right on over. Uh, there's like a gate over here, then you'll go through. And then we'll assess the area in here as, as we get deeper and um, and we'll kind of look at what, uh, the area they're killing, uh, that they are talking about um, in the guide. So it was saying that in the most eastern part of the room, so there's a ledge. So so we will find that and whatnot, and uh, that'll be that. So over here on this map, um, on this map over here, uh, you can see that they have the X's of where they uh, usually spawn. Uh, there is one over here in, in this room 10 or whatever, but I'm not going to go all the way through all that to get to that one We'll just keep killing in, in the room, um, and we'll find some methods 
two kill them, maybe one on one, maybe yeah, I'm not sure the entire layout. I know that there are a ton of ads all over the place, so maybe you'll have to take care of all those uh, here and there. So let's get to it. Let's just run to the room real quick so you can see it firsthand. So from the entrance, this is the zone. Uh, we'll just run through up the ladder and we'll go left. Here we are, we're in another, the other main room, and we'll just go to the right over here. And we get to the gates. Raise the gate, raise the gate again, and this is the main room. So we'll start conning everything, making sure or seeing what sees and visits, what doesn't, and we can start assessing the room. A lot of, of uh, slopes and whatnot here to get stuck on. Um, we don't want to get caught out in the middle. So there's, so there's a, an elite goblin guard right there. We got priests, so we got definitely got healers. Um, and the elite goblin guard sees and viz. Or at least that one does. Not sure if they all do. But um, good to know. There's another one down here. So yeah, we will definitely go through. There's elite honor guard. Uh, Goblin Patriarch, so these guys are blue now. Elite, all the elites seem to uh, see invis, so um, keep that in mind as we get to it. And there's some more down here the Goblin Sage, and another honor guard. Okay, so let's get to work. So, kill number 29 here. Just racking them up, <laughs> still chipping away. All these guards, all these guards down. Um, yep, still using Celis Constant Chain for the for the uh, snare. Uh, Psalm of Warmth for the damage shield, and Chant of Flame and Fufal Scutalian Chant for the um, dot damage. So these guys go down pretty nicely, and then we'll just heal up a bit afterwards and get the next. I think there's another one over. On, uh, the ledge here. See if we can get some icy greaves. Bada bing, bada boom. Here we are. 29. 29 kills <laughs> for the icy greaves. So cool. Got him. All right, so let's get down to Guck here. Uh, as you can see, we have a Shingul warrior. He's passing by. But um, anyways, I wanted to explain how to get down here first and foremost. So in upper Guck here, uh, we always start at the entrance, and typically we just run down. Uh, we'll go over the water here, and you can either come out of the water, you know, at this point, or just go around here. Either way, it doesn't really matter because it'll just connect. Um, but we'll come down uh, into this uh, room here, down the down the ramp, over. Um, whoop, from here, uh, we're taking this uh, corridor all the way down till we get to the little platform with a tiny little bridge uh, from here you can go you know two different ways you can go left or right doesn't really matter um, you can go right to number seven here on the map this will get you to the undead side of upper of uh, lower guck um, if you were to continue and say you went this way um, you'll get to what's the, called the uh, three-way uh, and you can either go down and swim under the water to five um, which is actually where i got the leg so that's uh, on the very first kill, so I've never had that happen, but it's possible. Um, or, you know, you come down and uh, you go all the way through to the live side uh, to number four. So uh, there's a few different ways to do that. You can also go under the water over here. Another zone out, which is the same as, you know, these two are the same, will lead to the same area. So once you do that, um, you know, zone in and we'll get to lower guck so here um if we pop out right here at c if you entered it in at seven um so if you entered in the map here uh this is where we will end up so you'll come in zone in and you can come right down to where i am now and uh oh, got people fighting but um where that frog lock was and actually on this map i came through the water this way 
and uh, popped out. There's a there's a, a rock here. You can go over. This is actually a waterfall, so you can pop out right here. And it is the first uh, Shin Knight that I killed, and he chopped those legs. Uh, so you can kind of work from e from either side. They will both eventually lead to the same place. Uh, but they're just full of mobs here uh, when they're all popped up and uh, ready for you to go. Um, and there'll be more along the way down here, but now you're talking about other other, other types of frog locks. So to maximize, I just kind of stick to the ends down here. So we'll get to it and get our uh, our Shin Greaves. All right, we got a Shin Ghoul here, uh, Shin Ghoul Knight, and see if we can get him down and get some legs. may even be able to cut him up and down these stairs, which might be kind of cool. That could be a little tedious as well, but we're getting him down nicely right now until he starts <laughs> speeding up and getting more hits. So we're out. this is why I like to use dots because our DPS still is just god awful. <laughs> it's just never really that good. But good enough, we can still get them. And uh, yeah, we just utilize that. Bam! There we go, baby. Shin Greaves. That's what we want. Cool. Easy day. We are back in the Temple of Sayusek Row, and we are looking to turn in our pieces for the Lamban Greaves. So real quick, we need to run up and talk to Jenny about getting some Fire Opals to get our Lamban Fire Opal. So we'll go up the steps. And through all the doors, and we'll talk to Jenny. So when talking to her, if you just say Fire Opal... She tells us that my brother Ostrom holds the secret to making fire opal lembenstones. Though he will not speak of it, if you give him two fire opals and a lembenstone, he will make you fire opal lemben. If you are interested, I can sell you a fire opal. And if we say sell, she tells us that she will sell a fire opal for 550 gold coins. Remember, gold. The metal of fire for a gem of fire. So with that, let's do that. So I'll just do one at a time. 550 gold to Jenny, and we get a fire opal. Do it one more time. And two fire opals. So now we'll just look over to our right, Mr. Ostorm here, Jenny's brother, and uh, we will give him a lambenstone and both fire opals, ensure that they are the correct items. And we will give them to him. And with that, ah, Jenny must have sent you to me. Very well, here is your Lambent Fire Opal. So, take that, and we'll head back down. Over the ledge to Mr. Fire Weaver. And with that, we have our Icy Greaves that we will turn in. Our Shin Greaves. And our Lambent Fire Opal, and we will hand them in. And there we go. We have our Lambent Greaves, uh, which are 13 AC, 1 Charisma, 5 Agility. Pretty nice, but what is nicer, as always, those nice legs. 
give a little dance there. Here we go. Congratulations. On to the next. So let's begin our quest for the lamb bent boots. So for this, we'll talk to Walton. We'll come over to him and we'll say lamb bent boots. And he says, lamb bent boots are the boots of choice for most bards. If you can bring me firewalker boots from a Sayusek mage and the middle portion of the rune of the one eye from a Cyclops named Froon, then I will give you a pair of lamb bent boots. Oh, I almost forgot. I will need a lamb bent sapphire as well. So let's look quickly at the wiki page here. And we'll keep track of the Lamban boot portion. Uh, and we'll see that we get Firewalker boots from the Sayusek Mage, as mentioned, uh, from Sayusek's eye. Uh, the Rune of the One Eye, the middle portion, is one that we'll need from Froon. Uh, and he is in West Karina with his brother Chun. And we will also need to acquire another Lamban stone and two sapphires so we can uh, get our Lamban sapphire. So with that information, let's get to it. All right, we are in Sayusek I, or Sol A, as it can be called. And we're looking to get the um, Sayusek Mage to get our Firewalker Boots for the Lamban Boots. And um, looking at the map real quick, what we're going to do is we are starting right here at Lava Storm Mountains. I'm going to do this in blue. Um, but we are going to run in and down um, around the slug, uh, around the lava. Uh, we can jump through a little hole in the wall, or we can just, you know, run around. Um, to get through to right here and then we're going to just jump down through the gate and uh continue continuing straight um through some gates there we're going to turn left and we're going to come down all the way turning left and then straight down again uh, we're going to go through a door to a little room in here uh that has uh, one mob and it does have one pather um, and then we can set up shop uh at the start either starting in this room or um, there is an invisible wall here, uh, and you can go into like, it's like a dungeon room over here, but, uh, that's a safe area to fight in. Nothing paths in there or whatever, but, um, but when we go straight, we're looking to get down to here, number 19 and number 20. Both of these rooms contain <coughs> the, uh, mages and their placeholders. So you have to keep cycling through just this area. This is the only place where I know that they, uh, spawn. And so we'll cycle through those a few times to get our firewalker boots so let's uh run down there quick so you can get a, a visual um make sure invis is on uh, some of these guys do see invis so just be careful about that so we'll come down the steps here and we'll just aim for this hole in the wall i can i would uh consider the guy in there because sometimes he sees invis as well but if you're a taller class like me you can just jump up duck and go right through the wall that way or you can just run around right there's a there's a a ladder or uh, these steps go all the way around there's a swinging axe but I mean whatever just two ways to do it so okay we come through and we're gonna aim right for this door this uh, there's hallways here just go straight just jump down straight through and you can con all these mobs and uh, raise the gate we're gonna go left and right and then straight down this way here and we'll go left there are mobs in these rooms as well so we just give them a quick consider they're indifferent same over here oh there's a mage right here so that's also good and he's ready to attack so i didn't actually know that <laughs> so um on the map real quick uh that's the room right here uh mage right there and also down here so that might be another good placeholder to to try and get so let's give him a quick lull make sure nothing else is around us and we'll continue on down to the high shaman room okay nothing there's usually a mob in here someone might be clearing um, and then straight into this room so we don't want to go down but we want to go over uh, there will be a mob here and one will path up and down uh, this is the high shaman room right here and there's a mage already up um lenata the exile the she won't aggro um she's for some quest i think a rogue quest or something the epic quest i think anyways uh one will also spawn where this treasure chest is i kind of just hug the walls here to kind of get stay out of line of sight just in case they are um in case they can see through invis so right here between the two doors uh, is an invisible wall 
bam and this is like a little dungeon room here and you can pull mobs into here just fine and not get aggroed um, and if you even wanted to kite them down you could run up and down these halls a um, little bit of kite area to uh, the dot snare whatever but cool so that's how we get down to the mage room all right here's my seventh uh, goblin mage still using a normal song lineup of cellos some of uh, cooling and two dots um, these guys hurt and can pack a punch as well if you're not resisting a lot I am or I think I just got hit 15 points of damage <laughs> but on the last one but uh Anyways, um, here we go. Firewalker boots. This is exactly what we need. So, seven, uh, yeah, seven kills, and uh, got our boots. Um, yeah, here down in the uh, high shaman area, there's actually another one that just popped in here. Uh, so, so that's cool. So all, all of these, and and one can spawn in the corner here. I had just cleared him out, but this is where they keep popping up. So you have to cycle through and kill all these. Um, another good area is um, through, 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 through the door here. Um, if you get too many ads, because there's some behind the doors and some down below down here, um, this is a secret wall. So you can go right in and down. And you can fight in here too. Nothing nothing is in here. And nothing will aggro you as long as you're you know sitting in here and whatnot. And there's a whole other tunnel system down here. That you can uh, also fight in if you need to. But that's it. On to the next. Alrighty, so my third attempt at killing Froon for his rune. So this is uh, actually about a 12 minute spawn here. Where I thought it was 22 for the uh, Karinas, but whatever. Uh, we're going to use the charm tactic. So send in old Chun. Beat up his brother Froon. Um, and again with charm, charming uh, tactic... We don't want to put any aggro or anything onto Froon just yet, um, so that we can keep recharming Chun and they will just keep fighting each other, duking it out. So we definitely want to keep Cellos on. There we go, we got a break. And there we go, Cellos back on. And they're decking it out. Chun, in this instance, is the superior brother right now. Uh, maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> Let me down, June. There we go. Let's get that targeting. Hey, what the heck is that? All right, 49, 55, we shall see what we get here in a second. We'll let them duke it all the way out, because they just, they'll respawn. Tune's going down. Froon is the superior brother. Oop, Cello's on is always good. In that case, I wonder if we can charm Froon. Let me get some experience from it. Almost got a whole level from doing all these quests, which is kind of cool. All these kills from the, getting our items for the Lamben armor. Man, neck and neck here. See who's going to be. Could be Chun, could be Froon, man. We'll just dot. Oh, looks like it might have been Chun. We'll just throw some dots on him. Same with old Chuny. Two percent. One down. And the other's down. Alrighty. Froon. Got Froon's rune. That's all we need. There we go. 
Uh, we'll take that and I'll put it next to Chun's rune so I know which one's which. C F alphabetical. <laughs> That's how I'm doing it. Uh, let's see if he even had it. Nope, no rune for Chun. But I already got it, so we are good to go. That's one way to kill Froon and Chun. Alright, let's turn in our quest pieces for the Lamp and Boots here in Sayusex Temple. So first, let's uh, run up and visit Jenny to ensure that we get the correct Lamp and Stone that's needed for the quest, which is the Lamp and Sapphire. So we'll come up. Find Jenny. And we will say Lamp and Sapphire. She says, my brother Gardern holds the secret to making sapphire limbend stones, though he will not speak of it. If you give him two sapphires and a limbend stone, he will make you sapphire limbend. So, let's go down here and find Mr. Gardern. And he is over here on the ledge. Okay, and since he will not talk to us, uh, we will give him a limbend stone and ensure that we have two sapphires. I will break them up. One at a time. Sapphire, sapphire, lamb and stone. And we'll turn that in. She goes, ah, Jenny must have sent you to me very well. Here is your lamb and sapphire. So we have that. So with those in hand, let's jump back down over the ledge to Mr. Walton Fireweaver. And we will turn in our Firewalker boots and our Rune of the One Eye and uh, lamb and sapphire. So uh, Rune of the One Eye, let's go through this real quick. Uh, we definitely want to identify just in case. And with that, we'll use uh, Lissa's Catalog in Liberto. And to use this, we'll have the rune on our cursor. Uh, we'll target ourselves and play the song. And it'll pop up Item Lore Rune of the One Eye Middle. So that is definitely what we want. Long forgotten knowledge sits, uh, sits sifts through your mind. <laughs> So cool. So let's hand in the boots, the rune, and the Lamban sa uh, Sapphire. Ensure that they are the correct ones. And we'll give them to them. And there we go. We now have a shiny new pair of Lamban boots. So these have 11 AC, 1 Charisma, and 2 to all resist. Pretty nice. And what's more impressive are your cool new blue feet. So there we go. Congrats on getting those. On to the next. All right, we were looking to acquire our Lamban Gauntlets, and for this, we will talk to Walthorn Fireweaver. And with him, we'll say Lamban Gauntlets. And he says, Lamban Gauntlets are exceptionally well made gauntlets. If you are interested, I will give you a pair, but you will have to bring me the following items that I need for a trade with the followers of Sayusek Row. I need Shin Gauntlets from a uh, Froglock Shin Knight and Black Silk Gloves from a Deathly Usher in Castle Mistmore. You will also need to talk to Jenny about getting me a Lamban Star Ruby. Bring me these items and you will earn Lamban Gauntlets. So again, real quick, let's look at the Lamban wiki page. On the wiki page, uh, Shin Gauntlets will be can be acquired from a Froglock Shin Knight, Froglock Shin Warrior, or Shin Ghoul Knight in upper guck or lower guck. Uh, black silk gloves uh, can be acquired from a glyphed aegis, a deathly usher, or a, a will sapper in castle mistmore. And again, we will need to acquire another lamb and stone and two star rubies, which we will get from Jenny. So with that, let's get to it. All right, we are here in upper guck and right now we are looking to get our shin gauntlets. Uh, so if we look at the wiki page right here, the shin gauntlets are can be found from a Froglock Shin Knight, Froglock Shin Warrior, and Shin Ghoul Knight, uh, and it can be found in either upper or lower guck. Um, most of the time I tend that I find these in lower guck. I don't think I've ever really noticed them in upper guck, but nor have I really fought a lot in there. But anyways, regardless, I, you know, I always trust the wiki, so uh, I think that works. Uh, one way to um, get here, there's a few options, right? So let's look at a map real quick uh, from Anithial Swamp. And it's cool. um, we're going to get to Lower Guck. So there's some ways to get to Lower Guck and different entrances that we might want to consider. And also to help us maximize possibly getting some other pieces, right? So if we're going to do like maybe the Basalt Gargoyles for our breastplate, um, we might want to come down to this zone here to the, to the uh, 
uh, live side because there is a single ghoul there right at the entrance, a, a shin a shin ghoul uh, that could that that could drop legs or or the gauntlets, and that's just an easy kill on the way to the basalt gargoyles. Um, otherwise, any of these other entrances could lead to the waterfall area or the main like the main entrance is usually considered to be right here. Um, is is and, and that's where I am now. Uh, to the undead side. So there's a few living here in the beginning, but then from there on out, it's all undead. So to get to these places, all we're going to do is starting at Enithiel, uh, we're going to come down, you, you know, remember, make sure you're in Viz. Uh, we're going to hang a right into the water area, just kind of go around. Typically, I like to just go uh, down here this way uh, through the Sryer room. We'll go into the tunnel down the ramp. Uh, through all these areas and we'll pop out and just follow straight down all the way uh, to going towards the right I will go over the little bridge areas over the little tiny bridge um, and From here you can choose to go right or left uh, If you're gonna go to the main area, obviously we'll go to the right and You can zoom right into lower guck here um, You can uh, continue down past that if you wanted to and go into the water uh, there's a little bridge right here, but you can go in and then zone in to the waterfall area. And this way also leads to the same place. So these two lead to the same area ultimately uh, when you enter or zone into Lower Guck. Um, and also alternatively, again, you can go either way from here. Um, doesn't really matter. But you can go up to what they call the three-way over the bridges, the little ramps here, uh, down the way just kind of hugging around and uh, another like little three-way thing I guess you can call it and uh, zone into lower gug this way so uh, the mobs here are all kind of spread out you have a lot of placeholders and whatnot so um, here in lower gug um, you know this is the live side over here Oop. the live side is over here and there's a single, uh, I guess from like this area and up, there's a single undead and he'll just roam up and down right here only. And then the rest of this area is all uh, the living um, frog locks. So uh, that's just one uh, area to potentially, uh, you know, get, let's just get one. Uh, that's just a single spawn point. Um, and then the other area will be um, through the... Uh, the uh, undead side we'll enter in at C from the from number seven on the other map we'll enter in here where I'm at right now and you can fight all the living ones here they're all Shin warriors and whatnot and there's a bunch down this way uh, I think there's one that paths up and around the waterfall this is like the waterfall area uh, the two areas underwater where or when you swim through and zone in they come into here and that's where I talked about where they kind of merge into one. So you ultimately end up at the same point. And then you can hop up on a rock over here and kill one of the roamers up here. And then there's, a you know, I think three or four in this room and then some other pathers. But cool. And you can fight all the way down into all these other rooms. You get into the water and you go underneath and you pop out into what they call, I guess, like the bedroom area. There is a bed in here. Um, but that's full of mobs too, so you'll lull, you can pull, you know, single ones out and whatnot. Um, just be careful of wizards and stuff blasting, but uh, kind of random spawn points. And all of this area here is, you know, safe for the most part. You can get a lot of singles and you just wait for the respawns. So let's get to it and get our shin gauntlets. All right, we got a ghoul shin knight and he is the one at the entrance to... A lower gut here on the live side. So we'll kill him quick. Uh, he's always worth killing. See if we can get the legs or the gloves. Just twist and cellos, damage shield, dot and dot. Uh, they're always usually a pretty even fight, neck and neck. And again, just, just showing why I pick level 40 for this.
and he's running. So that's easy. And there we go. Got our shin gauntlets. Perfect. Okay, so here in Mistmore, uh, we're looking to get the Black Silk Gloves, and these can drop off of a Glyphed Aegis, Deathly Ushers, or Will Sappers. Um, and those guys are going to be found throughout the castle areas. Uh, so right now, we are at the entrance. And what we're going to do is we're pretty much going to start uh, into the castle, and it's a little bit easier to control mobs in, uh, in some particular areas where they would pop up the most. Usually the Ushers are kind of all around. They can spawn some placeholders, and there's some... Pathing uh, mobs and wheel sappers that will spawn at night and all that kind of stuff that are undead But anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna invis and we're just gonna run through the lake area just around uh, We're gonna go up to the past the graveyard uh, into the little cubby here to the tunnel uh, then up to the castle entrance uh, There's a ton of mobs up here So it might be a little bit harder to single all of those out and to be the appropriate levels as well. So anyways, we're gonna come into the castle. You can go uh, right or left. I usually just go left, it doesn't really matter. And we'll kind of come into here and this area uh, in the uh, music room here in this area is where we're gonna find some of these mobs and where we can really start hunting some of those. Another option is to go through the graveyard here and into the uh, secret entrance over here. Do this during the day, because at night uh, there's these little hut, these little, um, like cells in here. It's, like, it's almost like a jail or something. I don't really know. But they can be undead and they will see invis at night. So just be cautious about that. Uh, there's an invisible wall here. So you'll go into the, or sorry, you'll go into here and then you'll kind of run through into another invisible wall. And this uh, ladder wall here will have sometimes a sapper or an usher. It's the placeholder for the, evan the evan uh, avenging uh, caitiff. And he is in there. Um, he could be in there as well, so just look out for that. And then you have some other mobs when you come in and down where you can also fight. That's just another option, but the main way I think is kind of maybe starting in here, and that's where I'm going to be fighting. So let's do that. Let's uh, just show you how to get there. So we'll get Invis on. There we go. From the entrance, just going to run right in. So past the lake. People fighting everywhere. Really good zone. Really good zone for experience. Um, I've already been fighting here uh, for a little bit. Getting some other items. And it's actually got me some pretty decent experience just solo. But anyways, we're coming down. We're past the graveyard there. Uh, the ramp to the castle entrance. We'll go up this. It's probably a group up here. And there we are. They have it all cleared. So we'll just run right in. Bloop, excuse me, sir. Uh, I'll just go left. And in. Soul Temptress. These guys see Invis. Someone's pulling her right now. Uh, normally there's gargoyles here. Maybe one up top, but they won't see you. And we'll kind of just peek around the corner. They might be pulling all this stuff. But, um, but here we will... Um, fight a lot of these. Uh, sometimes in the back where you can see the Ritualist and the Wheel Pillager, um, they can respawn as ushers. There's usually two mobs here, one here and one there, and uh, any of these mobs here can respawn as ushers, and as you get to these other rooms uh, down the side, there's a, usually a ton of mobs in here. Uh, so just be careful and uh, trying to lull your way if you have to. A good place to fight is in this invisible wall. So any mob that you pull, whether there's one here or wherever, um, line them up to be right in front, and then you can pull them into this wall. You can see that um, this hidden wall here. And this hallway is completely safe. You could play AE dots in here if you wanted to, uh, to kill you know, whatever, is it, whatever it is that you pull. And you go all the way down um, out the back. Uh, there are gargoyles up here on both sides. But, um, and this is the back entrance to that same room. So just be careful. Um, you shouldn't really have to, you can fight back here too. Um, and that is how you get to this area. And uh, 
and actually for practicality, let's go down through the graveyard just so you can, so I can show you that as well. Okay, so just for the other way, I'll uh, go on into the graveyard here, and what we'll do is still in Viz, we'll just come over here, hop over the wall, and right here there's an invisible wall, and I just kind of come in here. This is like a little room, and then we'll kind of go right through that. Um, usually they would be undead at night; they just all repopped. There's some ushers right here for us, waiting to go down. Three ushers, so you can lull to pull one out. Um, this is a a fake door, but right next to it is another. Uh, fake fake wall and you just go right up we'll see uh, if there's a placeholder kind of check around the corners it could be it could well, I guess it wouldn't be undead but um there we go another deathly usher waiting for it. and she will path up and down uh just a little careful pulling her right here they might aggro a mob in here that herald or something like that and if she aggroes, she might also aggro this one. <laughs> so just be careful. Just wait for her to path back down just like that. There you go. You could tag her and we'll get busy. Uh, if you come in, down this way and start fighting, you can simply jump off of the ledge here if you get in trouble. And that's the zone out. So if you jump off, easy day. And you can run out. They shouldn't be training anybody because by the time you get out of here in zone, um, you should be out of the zone and not training not training anyone. So that's how we'll get there and we'll get the gloves next. Okay, we've got an usher from the inside door here. Let's try to take her down. So just using a uh, snare, damage shield, self haste, and a, and a dot. See what we get. Maybe switch the two dots in a moment just for that extra that extra DPS. Actually, I actually can do it now. We'll do a five song twist, no problem. They can hurt, they can hit pretty, pretty good. Um, some nice. Yeah, nice in the 50s in there. Let's see. Yeah, 60s actually. go bam there we are we got our black silk gloves for our lamb bent gloves so pretty cool and a rune of ivy not a big deal there we go just gotta keep killing ushers until you get until you get the gloves it's pretty cool let's move on to the next piece all right, we are back in the Temple of Sayusek Row, and we want to turn in our pieces for the Lamb Band Gauntlets. So first, let's run up and talk to Jenny, so to ensure that we get the correct Lamb Band Stone. And in this case, we need the Sapphire Lamb Band. So we get up to Jenny, and all we have to say is Star, Star Ruby. And she will tell us, to make a star ruby lemben stone, you must give me two star rubies and a lemben stone. Lemben stones can be found on hill giants, sand giants, and griffins. So, let's do that. We have one lemben stone and two star rubies, which I'll break apart. And ensure that they are correct. The correct items. And there we go. Here's your prize, a lemben star ruby. Cool. So let's head back down to turn in our pieces. So for this we'll return back to Walton Fireweaver. 
and we will ensure that we have the correct items the shin gauntlets the black silk gloves and Lem Ben Star Ruby so let's hand those in now let's give one more final check and we'll turn them in so there we go nice shiny new pair of Lem Ben gauntlets 12 AC 5 dexterity 1 charisma pretty nice and what's more nice is your cool blue hands. Congratulations on getting those. On to the next. Alright Bards, we have done it. We've conquered the zones and the mobs needed to get our awesome set of Lamban armor. And thanks to our great quest givers, Walton and Carissa. Uh, without them, there's no Lamban armor. <laughs> so, uh... I'd like to, uh, con you know, congrats to everyone that has gotten the armor before and to all of those who will get their sets in the future. Hope this guide has helped in some way. Uh, you can see how we can tackle and manage some of these mobs and to get our pieces. Again, there's probably, there might be easier ways and uh, different methods to the madness. So please feel free to share your experiences, uh, your thoughts, opinions, tips and tricks down below in the comments. Uh, and remember, you can always reach out in game on this character or on my main bard, Lethan, uh, L-E-T-H-A-N. And with that, as always, we'll see you guys next time.